when you think back to that 1991 Gold Cup, you know, what, what, what comes to mind about your experience in that tournament? Um, well, for us, if you remember that period, Bora Milutinovic had come to our side and we, we were a, a, a nation, obviously, had just played in the World Cup for the first time in 40 years. And we had the World Cup coming to the U.S. And we were, it was a, it was a period of time where we knew that it was, it was a time where we needed to take the next step. Yeah. You know, and the next step for us was to try and now be dominant in our region. Right. We, we couldn't think about competing with the rest of the world until we thought about competing in our region and, and being at the top of our region all the time. And, you know, 1991 Gold Cup, um, obviously, we ended up winning that one. Um, and but I think more importantly, we ended up um, b developing a belief within the region that every time we play a CONCACAF nation um, that we should win. And that's not always going to happen, clearly. Mm -hmm. But but the mindset needs to be that you're going to win all the time. And I think it was in that tournament that we started to establish that. Wow. So that that belief kind of solidified in the in the '91 Gold Cup. I mean, it wasn't an easy start. You guys kind of had a, a tough start with Trinidad. You managed to to, to rally and win. And uh, but then you get to that semifinal with Mexico. And that seems like it was also kind of a pivotal semifinal as well with Mexico. That was kind of like the first sign that that the U.S. was going to go toe to toe with Mexico in the in for for a long time or until present day. Yeah. Well, you mentioned it. It's funny. I go back to that uh, Trinidad game um, and and the slow start. It, it, most people probably the, the story's been told a few times. Most people probably don't know or maybe they forgot the story. So our bus never showed up to the hotel. Um, so we were waiting and waiting and kickoff was coming and we were going to, uh, uh, that was in the, uh, was that in the, uh, Rose Bowl? I think that one. Yeah. Um, was it, did I have that right? Oh, Coliseum, the, Coliseum. Uh, the Coliseum. No, Coliseum. I believe that one was, I, that one for me, for some reason seems to be Bowl? like it was, it was in the, it was in the Rose Bowl. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then I only, only reason I know, cause I hadn't been to the Rose bowl uh, all that much at that point in my career. And so our bus never showed up. So we had some guys that were living in California, including Bora Milutinovic. Mm -hmm. And at one point we finally said, we got to get in the cars. We got to go to the game. So here we are myself, Marcelo Balboa. I think Paul Caligiuri, um, we're in Bora Milutinovic's Cadillac <laughs> driving to the game. And, and if you know, Bora, Bora, Oh. He he's 24 hours a, a day talking about football, you know, yeah. and talking about stories and in places he's been. And we're driving to the game, and he has no idea where he's going, <laughs> um, none whatsoever. And all I can think about is we're never going to make this game. This is our first Gold Cup game. We're not even going to make it, you know. So it, it was it was basically, <laughs> as I recall it, and I, I'm probably uh, I probably have a little bit of it wrong because it was 1991, but we left the we left the hotel uh -huh. that we were at and the the idea was forget what the starting lineup is what uh -huh. i gave you for the last 24 hours the first 11 guys that make it to the stadium those are the guys that are going to play <laughs> you know it's basically I, I i believe i believe we all made it there but that's how we left the hotel so we do we have a slow start and i, and I think um <laughs> memory serves me right Marcelo Balboa had a little bicycle kick at the end of the game uh, that ended up when we scored two goals in a row maybe Bruce yeah. Murray um, uh, again it's 1991 so I'm racking my brain here it's two really late goals like 85th and 88 something like that yeah and it was I know it was Marcelo with the bicycle kick and, and it was one of those that moment when you come back like that at the end of a game it's one of those sort of galvanizing things for your uh -huh. team uh -huh. You know, you, you, you always need something, a good start in a tournament, uh, a moment that goes your way, you know, something, something that happens. And that was it for us. Um, we went on, I think the next game was, uh, was Guatemala was in our yep. group. I think that was a pretty, we, we, we had a pretty good one there. Um, yep, pretty well, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and Costa Rica was a fun game. That one was back and forth and that mm -hmm. one was a battle. Mm -hmm. We went up, they went up two one, we ended up winning three, two in that one, mm -hmm. but that was a very good Costa Rican side. And then for me, you mentioned Mexico, and that was the semifinal game. Um, and I can remember I was injured. Um, I was playing that game injured. Um, and that, for me, was the start of Dosa Zero. You know, and I, every time it comes up now, and, of course, you know, it's been, there's been ebbs and flows in this, in this rivalry for, for years. But for me, that was the first time that I think Mexico said, 
Oh man, we we have someone else to think about in Concacaf. We mm-hmm. have somebody else to worry about. And in this U.S. team, we were young um, at that point. We were maybe a little bit naive to what you know who Mexico was in the world scene and all of that stuff. But I don't think we cared in the end. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it was in, and that was the start of making that a fun rivalry. That was, uh, I mean, and, you know, the, the highlights are out there on YouTube, and, and, and we're going to be showing the game in its entirety on, on CONCACAF on the Facebook and YouTube pages and everything. Um, I mean, you were just looking back at, at that game. It was, you know, I don't know if it was, you would consider it your best game of the national team. You had so many, but I would have to think it's, it's up there. Like, you, I mean, you had an excellent performance in goal. What, where would you rank it, or would you put it among your best? Yeah, um, again, I, I, I'm trying to remember how old I was. I was 20, 22 years old, maybe. I was still 21 at the time, yeah. but I was trying to, you know, I was trying to prove that I belonged on the national team still. Yeah. And even though I had played in the World Cup, you know, there's still David Van Oli and there were other guys, Brad Friedel and Casey Keller, and we were all battling. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, it was, a, it was a good tournament for me. Um, but, but I think more importantly, you know, outside of, of any – uh, personal goals that I had the, the number one goal was we needed to establish ourselves um, as a as a force in, in the CONCACAF region and um, I, it, there's no doubt in my mind um, that that was remember in 1990 Mexico was disqualified from the World Cup they right, couldn't go right. to the World Cup so right. we didn't we didn't have that as a challenge you know Mexico yeah. wasn't a challenge at that time as much as they would have been had, had mm. we had to play them there's no doubt um, and, and they're always a challenge uh, that, you know, this was the time that we finally can, we, you know, in a three year period leading up to 94, where we had to really establish ourselves. And I think we did a pretty good job of that. Um, I actually, ironically, I talked to Eduardo Bennett uh, from Honduras yesterday. You know, he was on that 91 Honduras team that you all played in, in the final. And I mean, kind of an odd final right it happened two days after the semifinal so you guys like you play the semifinal and then two days later you're playing the final and kind of just like this this slugfest is like both teams look you know kind of worn out and everything and, and then you have to go to extra time and, and penalties and everything you know, what what do you recall about that final um you know fernando clavijo the last kick uh, to, to win it there it's uh we were we were in a final and uh we were in a final of a competition where we could win a medal i mean the u.s hadn't won all that very all that many medals in uh in men's football and and um this was an opportunity for us that was a very good honduran side as well uh, it was a slug fest as you mentioned back and forth and it was um it was not an easy uh it was not an easy night for us by any stretch of the imagination and um we we endured this this thing and we we were we were a little bit beat up um for sure it was it was a grind for us the mexico game took a lot out of us a couple yeah. nights before um i want to say we only had uh, you know it was it was a 48 hour turnaround from yeah. finals to uh because I remember that this was a real, really the first time in my career that we had gone in and we ever had to worry about recovery and recuperation. And, and the next day we basically did nothing. And I remember having this, this thigh injury that I had in the Mexico game and thinking, man, this isn't getting any better. I need, I need, you know, if I had another day, I would have probably felt the right, but those, those weren't in the cards. Um, but yeah, it was a grind and, and we, we ended up winning a medal and that's, uh, that's always really important. Uh, Honduras had two chances to win that final. They had two in the shootout, two yeah. chances, not just one, but two. Um, so in a pressure situation like that as a goalkeeper, or, I mean, what, what, what's going through your mind? What, what are you thinking? <laughs> you got to make a save. <laughs> you know, yeah. It's over. Um, yeah. And I just, on the night I was, uh, I was fortunate that it went my way and I, what did, did we go to 10 penalty kicks, right? I think it was it, nine it or 10 deep. because, I remember I was getting close. I don't remember where I was, but I was like, I was getting close. You know, I said, if I get, if it ends up getting to me, then I, I've done a good job because of those two uh, <laughs> penalty kicks that, that uh, were, were, had the chance to win it for Honduras. Yeah, but it was, again, just overall, the tournament was, was a real, was a real turning point in a, in a shift in mentality for our group and a shift in mentality for the Federation and, and probably for our fans uh, as well. Yeah, it was it was interesting in the shootout going back through it. So at one point, both 
the U.S. and the Honduras missed two straight kicks. So there's like a stretch where the second and the third attempts from both teams miss. And then like, I think it's like the fifth and the sixth attempts both miss. Like, mm. so there was, there was a lot of balls over the crossbar. I mean, it was just, it was, you could, I don't know if it was tired legs or, you I'm know, sure. I'm sure. mental states or whatever, but um, that, so that experience and then 11 years later you're part of the 2002 team that that wins the that wins the gold cup uh you know obviously much more of, of a veteran role a different team you guys are you know that's a team that was kind of put together with the uh, with pointing towards the 2002 world cup um so what was that 2002 gold cup experience like for you um a little bit different experience obviously yeah. uh being a little bit older and not playing in that tournament uh, but understanding the importance of of the role uh, but I think when you when you look at sort of the shift in mentality in, in that period of time, you look at uh, you look at it and go, well, we expected to be in the finals in 2002. Um, the next the next Gold Cup, whenever we get to play it um, here in 2021 or 2000, you know, yeah, 2021, yeah. we expect to be in the finals. That doesn't again, that doesn't mean you're always going to be in the finals. But in 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 uh, 1991. I don't think there was an expectation that we were going to be in the finals. There was a desire to be in the finals. There was a, a desire to win. Uh, but, you know, like in 2002, that, that particular group and a few groups after that, even though they've lost a couple times in finals, uh, the U.S. team, we, we, we haven't won every one. But the expectation is to go into that tournament and, uh, and, and be in the final, have an opportunity to win a trophy. Uh, because if – and, I, and I, I said this in the beginning – if if you're not dominating your region, it's hard to think that you're going to dominate anywhere in the world. It's hard to think that you're going to compete. You, you have to, you know, it's, there's a process you have to, uh, you know, take steps and, and, uh, our particular group right now, this young group of players, who I've been pretty bullish on for a long time, I, I think is, is primed to take those steps. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the evolution of the gold cup, if you will, you know, from the 1991 edition from, piling into Boris Cadillac to, 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 to go through LA traffic and get to the Rose Bowl in Pasadena to, to what we see now, 2019, obviously, you know, it's, it's an expanded field. I mean, the, you know, more teams and everything, but just, you know, the, the growth of, of the tournament and, the, and then the growth of some of these teams, like you see, you know, Curacao rising up, Haiti rising up, you know, the Caribbean, uh, you know, what's, uh, what are your, what's your thoughts on the growth of the World Cup from, from 91 to 2019? Well, I think for our region, it's vitally important that the Cubas of the world, you mentioned Curacao and Panama when they started, you know, yeah. started some good sides and, and, and bringing good uh, competition to the tournament. It's imperative if our region is going to grow that there's that more teams have the opportunity to qualify for the tournament. It's imperative that those nations um, who, who haven't had the experience of a World Cup maybe or or uh, teams that are now built rebuilding again a Trinidad uh, who's had World Cup experience who's done well in Gold Cups but now they're in a new cycle Panama now is in a new cycle that they have the Gold Cup uh, to compete they have the Gold Cup um, it's great you play friendlies um, you you get something out of those I like the fact we have CONCACAF Nations League now there's some there's there's something at the end of it the Gold Cup clearly in our region is the number one tournament you want to play in. It's the one you want to compete in. It's the one that you want to win. You have to have a goal all the time. You have, to, as an athlete, you need something always to strive for, or else you're never going to get better. So, I think it's a really important uh, competition, the most important competition on the men's side for us, um, in order to to build uh, whether it's whether it's the, the the start of your soccer playing nation or it's a new cycle. Even mm -hmm. for the U.S., it's a new cycle, really, for this uh, particular group. To think that we can just throw them in a World Cup and they're going to be successful right. is probably asking a lot, you know. But to think that we have Gold Cup and we have CONCACAF Nations League and we have competitions now where they can kind of get groomed a little bit and learn a little bit, there's, there's, a, there's a trick to playing in CONCACAF, right? You have to navigate a lot of different things when you play in CONCACAF. <laughs> Um, and, and I think you get hardened by those experiences. So when you finally get to the world stage, um, you know, you, you can be successful. 